Greetings, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As we follow the cycles of the moon, we come together again for our joint group service, meditating for the common good. This month, we work with the energy of Scorpio, which is part of the fixed cross. And through the cycle of the fixed cross, we invite the group to focus on the theme of bringing the principle of sharing to human awareness, and more specifically, principle of sharing to world economy. And yet this month, the topic of sharing comes in a different aspects. The subjective support group, the custodians of the purpose, uh, came with the different aspects related to sharing. Sharing our responsibility. And that's been the topic that's been in our focus since the full moon time when we came together to invoke the vision and ask for impressions on what is in the divine plan for humanity on sharing our responsibility and to Today we come together to share our impressions and bring, bring the synthesizing seeds thoughts to our group meditation, to magnetize them as thought forms and radiate towards humanity. Thank you for being part of this work. Over to you, Rebecca. So as we continue to align ourselves with what Alexander's just said, we just visit again our purpose for the project the meditation for the common good, which the name says it all really. Um, but our specific purpose is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our group meditation, which focuses group intention for the common good. Bring spiritual laws and principles to life and magnetizes spirit-saturated thought forms of solution for practical action. So we align with the sign of Scorpio, the sign of tests and trials, and of the transformation through battle of the disciple. As we strive to magnetize and energize these thought forms, these ways of being, to sense them, the ways of being which will support the development of shared responsibility among the human family. And as we draw together around this intention, and continue to align further, I hand over to Tracy, who will lead us in the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca, and welcome everyone. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, 
the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and action area group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome, Rebecca. Rebecca Hood calling in from the Sunshine Coast on the east coast of Queensland in Australia. Welcome, Katya. Katya Kaufman calling from upstate New York, USA. Welcome. Barbara. Shows now that Barbara is offline. Yeah. Well, welcome, Barbara. Bernard. Calling from France. Welcome. Darcy. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Jillian. Jillian calling from North Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Josette. Hello. This is Josette calling from French. Welcome. Catherine. Catherine just joined us. If you could unmute yourself. This is Catherine from Texas. Welcome. Leslie. Leslie, if you can unmute yourself, please. Hi. Hi. Leslie Van calling in from sorry. Go ahead, Leslie, sorry. Oh, Leslie Van calling in from sunny Arizona, USA. Welcome. Lynn. Lynn Green, um, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Margo. Greetings, everyone. This is Margot Rush calling in from Victoria, British Columbia, just off the west coast of Canada. Welcome. Martine. Martine Dupont calling in from uh, Chatino, Belgium. Welcome. Maureen.
Marine, if you could please unmute yourself. Welcome, Maureen. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis. Welcome. Ruth. Hi, this is Ruth calling in from Corvallis, Oregon, USA. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. And so we meet today's action area group who um, with other interested meditators have gathered to contemplate our topic at the time of the full moon. And the impressions generated have been held and brooded over, as Alexander said, by the action area group and those other meditators and some of you, um, the whole community involved with this pro project during the preparation phase for the new moon up to this time now. So this month, our action area group is made up of Tracy, Alexander, Katya, and myself. And I'll hand over now to Tracy, who will begin today's synthesis of impressions from the action area group. Um, actually, sorry, before I say that I should say that our action area group meeting included um, input from from Darcy and Lynn and Martha um, so um, the richness of our shared conversation is together um, in in what we're bringing forth today so over to you Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, thank you to everybody who contributed also to this, uh, this webinar. Um, this is such a huge topic uh, and large undertaking when we're talking about sharing responsibility because sharing the responsibility has to do with more than one thing that we're sharing responsibility <laughs> We must share it on everything. So uh, with that, uh, I will begin. As the phase of the new moon appears in the sign of Scorpio, we are reminded that out of the dark, a new light can shine forth. The fixed cross upon which Scorpio sits offers the disciple and aspirant the energy of Ray 2, which permeates and enlivens the soul, as well as everything within our solar system. It offers to us, especially during this time, the opportunity to channel its divine aspect of love wisdom, which is assisted by the hierarchy and channeled through us 
to be impressed upon the masses for its outward expression. I'd like us to now place our attention and focus on sharing the responsibility of the collective inherited past karma of mankind. Again, this is a huge task. Much to undertake here, for there are many heads to this Lernian Hydra. But we can know how to slay the mount monster by following the steps which were taken by Hercules. First, we must be patient with ourselves and search deep for it and recognize its existence. Second, through humility and compassion, we must bring the slimy fragments of the unconscious to the surface and expose them to the light of wisdom, which we name the soul. And third, and I feel most importantly, what we need to do is learn the art of transmuting the energies to prevent catastrophic tra tragedies. And I kind of feel like that's where we're at now, is learning that art of transmuting these energies um, into this world. Through humility, courage, and discrimination, we can objectively recognize our shortcomings and egotistical urges that have repressed us for so long and come from a new angle to break the Hydra's grip and subdue the beast. The lower and unconscious drives of the scorpion can then consciously be recognized and transformed. In Discipleship in the New Age, Part 2, we are told that the masters are not occupied with our temporary faults, but with the firm hold of the soul's grip upon its personality and its intention, as well as the aspirant's habitual response to soul energy. It is no chance that we are all here together today and working on this mighty task. In esoteric healing, it states that man reincarnates under no time urge. He incarnates under the demands of karmic liability, under the pull of that which he as a soul has initiated. And because of a sensed need to fulfill instituted obligations, he incarnates also from a sense of responsibility and to meet requirements which an earlier breaking of the laws governing right human relations have imposed upon him. When these requirements, soul necessities, experiences, and responsibilities have all been met, he enters permanently into the clear, cold light of love and life and no longer needs, as far as he himself is concerned, the nursery stage of soul experience on earth. He is free from karmic impositions in the three worlds, but is still under the impulse of karmic necessity, which exacts from him the last possible ounce of service that he is in a position to render to those still under the law of karmic liability. As human beings, we are not a separate entity, but a part of a whole. We share everything, especially the responsibility of preparing for the future of mankind. We share the responsibility for the welfare of our planet, 
and all sentient beings which use this vehicle for their expression and evolution. Mankind has been named caretakers and have been given dominion over a diverse and beautiful world. This must be remembered as we consciously observe, recognize, and transmute all energies of fragmented thinking and separativeness. This is an exciting time of awakening and reckoning as we actively assist the impulse towards synthesis and soul-infused being. The eagle is now in flight. Over to you, Rebecca. Maybe we can hold this silence sometimes. It's just a lot of things to reflect. Thank you, Alexander. So continuing our theme, when we look to dictionary definitions, we find the word responsibility defined as firstly, the state of being the person who caused something to happen, being accountable, being answerable. Secondly, duties or tasks we're expected to do, obligations, burdens. And thirdly, something we should do because it's morally or legally required. What does this mean for us? as incarnated service. How can we deepen our understanding of responsibility, the word responsibility, the action of responsibility playing out through our personal actions and endeavors in life, through our interactions with each other, and our interactions with the greater social organisms and spiritual organisms of which we're a part. As individuals, we're intertwined with the greater whole, as Tracy said. Therefore, we automatically share in the responsibility for that whole. And this is expressed so well in um, Madame Rorick's letters. She says, we must realize our place in infinity, as well as our dependence upon the complete unity of life in the cosmos. 
Remember how it is said in the teaching, verily a feather falling from the wing of a small bird produces a thunderclap in the far off worlds. We must realize most intensely our awesome dependence and interrelationship with everything in life. Thence should come a sense of great responsibility for each thought, word and action. Cause and effect act continuously and infinitely. And this month, the Action Area co-workers have highlighted our group recognition of the relationship between responsibility and the law of cause and effect. But the Tibetan reminds us of our incapacity at our current point of development to truly grasp the meaning of this law. He says, I've given enough to indicate to you the stupidity of attempting to state that you understand these laws to which you are groping and which you seek to understand. The world of glamour is at this time so strong and the sense of illusion so potent and vital that we fail to see these basic laws in their true significance. A great law of cause and effect exists but the knowledge of humanity on the subject of karma is very elementary and the real truth bears little resemblance to our modern formulations. While we cannot yet properly understand the law, as Madame Rorick indicates, and as Tracy has outlined as well, we still have the power to work by taking responsibility for all our thoughts, words and actions. Michael Linfield recently suggested that each derogatory thought or negative emotion we generate is a poisonous release into the ethers and causes the same destructive effect to the human psyche as harmful chemicals have upon the physical world. Like Hercules, we must lift the hydra out of the swamp. And as we strive to meet this responsibility, sometimes we can become overwhelmed by the weight of the task and the sense of inadequacy and darkness. Here again, the glamour and our misunderstanding of the concept of karma comes into play. But the Tibetan tells us, karma has always been interpreted in terms of disaster and consequences that are painful, of error, of penalty, and of evil happenings, both for the individual and for the group. Yet, such is the beauty of human nature, and much that is done is of such a fine quality, and so selfless, and so happily oriented, that the evil is frequently offset by the good. There is everywhere, little as it may be realized, an abundance of good karma, of a potency under the same law 
equal to that which is regarded as bad. Of this small mention is ever made. This good karma brings into activity forces which may work out as healing energies in any specific case. So this tells us that we need to also take responsibility for this good karma. So perhaps we can gain strength to shoulder our responsibilities of taming and uplifting the Hydra by connecting with our goodness and with the goodness of those around us and the goodness in the world. We cannot afford to justify our mistakes or lie to ourselves. The work of defeating the Hydra demands that we face ourselves honestly and impartially. But by truly sensing and recognizing that we each have karmic merit, we may find firm ground to stand or kneel on while we face the awfulness that frightens and disgusts us. Marshall Rosenberg, the father of nonviolent communication or NVC, as some of you may know it, asserts that the denial of personal responsibility for our actions alienates us from our natural state of compassion. As we strive to overcome our denial of responsibility, our forgetfulness, the fogs, mists that separate us from it, we can listen to his suggestion. He suggests there are specific forms of language and communication that contribute to our behaving violently towards ourselves and others. We are dangerous, he says, when we are not conscious of our responsibility for how we behave, think and feel. To overcome this, he suggests we can replace language that implies lack of choice with language that acknowledges choice. Instead of in attributing the cause of our actions to factors outside ourselves. This takes reflection, self-awareness. Also in considering how we can share responsibility for governing ourselves and stewarding and sharing the earth's resources, the problem of the sixth head of the Hydra expressing the desire for power seems very relevant. Currently, the wielding of power by certain groups on our planet has eclipsed the sense of responsibility for many people, keeping humanity asleep, casting myths, hindering the sharing of and the striving towards responsibility among humanity, the sense of power to be responsible. FM's commentary on the eighth lesson of Hercules, the eighth labor, describes this problem. During the past few hundred years, man has released the energy of power far more than that of love. Power, when unrelated to love, is a corrupting force. 
many tragedies in human relations result from the uncontrolled desire to dominate the lives of others, to prescribe and regulate their conduct. He who substitutes power considerations for ethical principles engenders perpetual strife. The high ideals that have served as beacons over the centuries, brotherhood, cooperation, idealism, glow dimly as long as power is the determining factor in society. As we attempt to take responsibility for solving humanity's problems, it's, it's so important for us to work open-mindedly and lightly. Realizing the incompleteness of our vision and testing our proposed solutions, never imposing. So returning to Madame Roerich, she alludes to this need for the unifying power of love. She says, all of us are guilty for ourselves and others, for we cannot isolate ourselves from the rest of humanity and from the cosmos. Verily, the cosmos is in us, and we are in it. But only the realization of this unity makes it possible for us to join in such an existence.
Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Tracy. Really a lot to take into the reflection and such a not an easy topic for not even a reflection, but like taken in. Each word is it's has so much in it. And uh, the energy of Scorpio being an opposite of energy of Taurus, constitute the same energy, which very intimately related to the new group of world servers. And so that's why probably we also have this you know, thrill when we work with these energies. Whenever it's the sun in Taurus or in Scorpio, it gives such a big stimulus for, for us as a group. The whole concept of the new group of world service is so new, is so uh like in this terms of human evolution and it's an amazing that dk assigned the the new group of all service as the ajna center of the planet right there there's just such a responsibility and it's just like wow <laughs> how this could be and yet that's along with the shambhala hierarchy humanity new group occupies place in the planetary as a center of the planetary being this in the last two weeks uh, uh, very interesting phrase that I've heard that really stuck with me and every time I think about it or share it I smile and um, it's uh, attributed to Rajnish uh, who said that democracy is the uh, governance of people by people for people but people are retarded And it's just right there. It's yeah. It's yes. We as uh, like all together as uh, species, as an uh, evolutionary stage, we are still a, um, on the stage where we're not collectively are capable to recognize the all burden of the responsibility for all the millennia and for uh in the past and all the millennia forward for all the choices we make now and made in the past and that's where that sense of burden for the new group world service becomes even higher that only coming to the soul consciousness we can recognize that responsibility responsibility of the choices made by humanity. And it's work in progress because we, uh, as a group, when I say we, I, I mean all our like, millions of those who knowingly or unknowingly belong to the new group of all service, we just learning to recognize our unity and our position and our responsibility and that's where the law of group endeavor comes into work for us it's we learn by doing we learn through practice 
through meetings like this and many others, non-esoteric meetings and projects that we involved, we learned to uh, exercise our muscle of responsibility and try to do something. When this topic of sharing our collective responsibility being suggested and uh, formulated as such, I don't recall we were thinking about the uh, coincidence of a historic event that's happening this month. And I'm talking of the, about the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. It's just an amazing that's that's actually happening now in the month of Scorpio under the energy of Scorpio and uh, in, in a way it's a beneficent opportunity that we our small group here gathering in line we uh, uh, reflecting on topic of sharing responsibility because the government governments of the world who gather it now in Glasgow they talking about exactly about that how we share our responsibility for the past deeds and our responsibility to the coming generations for the choices we make now. In a way, the new group of old servers now standing in the position of the Her of Hercules, fighting the Hydra. We're going through all those stages that Tracy outlined at the beginning for uh, in this labor of Hercules. We first have to ex acknowledge the existence of the Hydra. And then we master our skills of dealing with the Hydra. We actually take a grip on the Hydra. And then we lift it to the light of the soul. Light of the soul of humanity. An amazing message came just in the last few days. I, 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 I got it yesterday. Probably some of you uh, saw the in, in different group chats was circulated the message uh, uh, that uh, David Spangler uh, shared uh, with the esoteric community. Uh, the, uh, I pasted the link to the. Uh, Finhorn community website where they posted that message. Uh, uh, if this link is in the community impressions board, uh, I will put the link in the chat a little bit later, but probably you saw. And so that's um, the message that David uh, uh, received from his co-workers on the inner planes in regard to this uh, conference happening in Glasgow now. Uh, asking us to focus on the spirit of humanity not to think about all the bad things that we as humanity now immerse to and all the bad things that happened in the past but hold the focus on the soundness of human soul In other words, holding the focus on the angel of the presence. As we collectively deal with the Hydra, with the, all the issues, we need to hold that focus. And that was the, the core of the message request. It was rather a request asking all the meditators of the world to 
during this time while the conference happening in Glasgow to meditate on soundness of spirit of humanity, our collective spirit, our like collective angel of the presence. That that angel of the presence will overshadow governments of the world who deciding now on on the fate of humanity in a way and then the fate of this planet and that ma message says it's not the first time that humanity struggles with her uh, own issues uh civilizational issues but every time the goodness the, this deep goodness of that is in humanity wins and lead us forward And that's where I uh, ask us to bring, uh, recollect that principle of essential divinity. That that divinity that's in each of us and us as collectively leads us forward. That's in a recollection of that sacredness of us as humans can lead us from this current crisis. And to continue on that note of the ecology of our life. Because to me, the issue of karmic matter and the way we as humanity, as groups, as individuals will deal with it, it is um, part of the ecology of our life. And uh, today I want to talk about the part of that life, which are words. <laughs> when you think about the soil on the planet, we're being told that the soil has been depleted of the nutrients. And therefore, our food does not contain 
not even close to enough nutrition. Because what our body needs, it's not the form or shape of the food or the taste, or maybe taste is important. Because it tells us, it's our diagnostics, the smell, the taste, tells our body that it is worth eating. But the main thing is the essence of the food, which has nutrients that we're bringing into our body and build the cells. It is the same with the mental concepts, which once were ideas, spiritual energies and concepts transformed into ideals and then ideas and then from ideas into thought forms and thought forms are manifest through words so the same way that we need to rebuild our soil revitalize it i believe that esoteric community has a shared responsibility of revitalizing the words that we're using that reflect the form of the great concepts. Our goal and our responsibility, I believe, is just to start making a stable connection between the essence of the words that we're using the angelic presences that are standing beyond and behind and supporting and spiritual beings and standing behind the concepts that we are explaining so when we say our words They are edible and nutritious and can be digested because sometimes the food is so rich that, you know, our body cannot break it down. It's the same thing. Certain concepts are so vast that they require small steps substantiated with our life so others can see how we in our life work with that concept and how we sustain our life with the energies that it brings i believe if we focus on that we'll start saying less and we will leave more space for others to connect with the essence beyond, behind our words, within our words. And I believe that it will allow also more love to come through. Because our teachers, our masters, they shifted from the mental plane to the buddhic plane. So that is the energy that is required in our life, in our service, in the way that we you know, talk to each other, meditate. Revitalization of the three planes. The cleansing of the astral plane, Revitalizing the mental plane. Connecting with the etheric plane. Allowing the energy of the soul and of the spirit to come through. 
so we can be those bridges not just because we say so but because we building that life that will support that within ourselves within our group and therefore for humanity And I also think that although we love the teaching and uh, there is so much wisdom in there and more and more to ponder and so beneficial to know, there are also certain revelations that come to us individually and to the group. And it is important to hear one another. What do we have to share? Like creating mandala. Each one gets their own color and their own shape. And we share. We share our impressions and we share our methods, how we relate and how we accept and bring down the energies that we are talking about. And how we as a group bring enough of the booty energy for our work. So whatever we do new or different or disagree or not quite aligned yet, will be offset by that energy. And the group will make another step forward. Thank you. Now we go into meditation. We get united with the energies of light and love and will to good. Stabbing in the energies of Scorpio.
the energies of discipleship. We are firm. In the center of the will of God, I stand. Not shall deflect my will from his. I implement that will by love. I turn towards the field of service. I, the triangle divine, work out that will within the square and serve my fellow men. And we see our group being holding the chalice. through which the distribution of the energies of Scorpio come through. So we put our thought forms into that chalice. So with the waters of Scorpio, the essences of our thought forms get distributed and serve people of goodwill and humanity. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Katya. Into the chalice I place, out of the darkness, a new light shines forth. Rebecca. We must realize most intensely our awesome dependence and interrelation with everything in life. Thence should come a sense of great responsibility for each thought, word, and action. Cause and effect. Act continuously and infinitely.
Alexander. principle of essential divinity of humanity. We tune to the soul of humanity that holds all the possibilities and the creative potentials and the vision that can shape a positive future. soul of humanity is sound. Katya. May we connect with the essence within the form of words. May our Words be living beings and serve the forces of light. May we hear the silence within ourselves and others. And through that silence, may the will divine come through and support us in our path.
And we, the group, become I, the group. And we become that Charles. And from that point, I invoke. From the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. from the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, that the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Let it be the will of the great ones. and their wisdom, and their service. Thank you everyone for being here today and offering your beautiful energy towards this 
topic of sharing responsibility. It is now time to open the floor for group sharing, as well as uh, the Community Impressions Board, which Alexander will place uh, the link to that in the chat box so that you can um, add, to a, add to this beautiful meditation and the fruits of it uh, over the next uh, several weeks, if you'd like, um, with what comes to you through this meditation. Uh, we always appreciate everybody's sharing and uh, look forward to hearing the words of wisdom that come from everyone out of these meditations. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy. Um, the link to the Community Impressions Board is in the chat now, so you can uh, see all the sharings that's been already accumulated there through the last couple of weeks. And you're welcome to add your impressions there or to share them now. We still have some time. So if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. I added to in the handouts the file that was shared uh, from David Spangler request for meditation for Glasgow Summit. Uh, Margo, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Alexander. And deep gratitude to Katya, Rebecca, and Tracy for the depth and fineness of frequency, the, the nutrients in the soil of, uh, of this gathering. Another definition of responsibility that, that occurs to me is one's ability to respond. Ability to respond to whatever presents itself in the most harmless manner. Holding on our focus. on the angel with the presence of humanity and the principle of essential divinity. To strengthen our ability to respond, to live, to respond to the angel of the presence and our ability to respond and express our essential divinity. Feels like we're being magnetically drawn forward. And the light of Taurus is shining light upon the way.
And you have, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Tracy and Rebecca and Katya. It was a beautiful meditation. And it's interesting because for the last couple of weeks, after we gathered to, to discuss this a little bit on a preliminary basis, the word responsibility has been an echo in, in my consciousness all the time. It is amazing just the reminders um, in such a frequent way that speak to exactly as you all sort of indicated that that real responsibility to lead by example. Um, we have been given the privilege to lead in a very invisible way and to bring it sort of into manifestation by, by walking the talk is for all of us the most important, maybe one of the most important aspects of how we precipitate what we believe and know into the greater aspect of humanity and the greater consciousness of humanity. And it's interesting today, there was an enormous amount of sort of the divine mother. And again, with the, the COP26 conference, so a part of all of our lives these days, and the concept of Mother Earth, and that, that mothers have a responsibility to, to, to teach by example in, in the highest way, and that there's an energy in the responsibility it is very maternal for me. And I just thank you so much for, for having this topic because I think it really is so important for all of us to hold it very close to our waking consciousness as we, as we lead. Um, I've been thinking um, since our last meeting, um, as well as has everyone, um, about, about our topic and um, everything we've, we've uh, heard integrated so beautifully. Um, and I appreciate so much um, everyone's contribution. Um, but I thought I had a couple paragraphs here that I jotted down really this morning that I thought I might share. Um, a quote I found, when man takes responsibility as co-creator, the evolutionary flow of nature responds from the Perlandra Garden Workbook. Um, so a reminder within this month's Scorpio energy of deep relationship moving into discipleship, that our shared responsibility includes all the kingdoms, leading eventually to humanity's recognized stewardship of Earth. Um, the Deva kingdom, providers of all manifested forms created from their own essence, plays an essential role in building our new Aquarian world. In cooperation with their ancient and great power and love and adherence to divine law, Humanity is able to contribute imagination, creativity, and an ability to change context that makes our united efforts world-changing. However, we must be working as best we can from the soul level to attract Deva cooperation. Um, William Meter says in Shine Forth, Devas seek to serve the will of the human soul. Humanity must recognize that while the Deva kingdom provides forms for the manifestation of deity or involution, and the purpose of the human kingdom is evolution, both are required to fill, fulfill divine purpose. 
and through that recognition give respect and appreciation, not worship nor denigration. We can give friendship and a willingness to try to communicate to gain the help of the Deva world, the builders. Again, we must be working as souls and not be lost in identifying ourselves with dev the devic matter, matter of our bodies. What's needed, an equal and awake Aquarian partnership. <clears throat> My reading and experiences tell me that nature wants very much to work with us in deep and spiritual relationship. As the age changes, this is an extremely challenging time for us all. Change made to nature through pure will and desire of humans disregarding the Deva dynamic is called by them manipulation and results in weakening imbalances which become part of the ecological disaster we presently experience. That's from again from the Paralandra Garden Workbook. While human cooperation, cooperative participation empowers the Deva work of cleansing, balancing, energizing, and increasing light, as well as empowering our human service. This is accomplished with practiced communication. Nature intelligence can see our energy and our actions, and sometimes hear our intent expressed through thoughts and words, although it is not necessarily easy for them, any more than it is easy for humans to hear them. Quiet listening, contemplation, and work in nature are avenues for implanting of ideas, visualizations, and intuitive interplay by devas and nature spirits. Asking questions and asking for their help give them a doorway. Belief, patience, commitment, and an open heart can make it happen. Through, cooperative, through cooperation with devic intelligence, how many more urgent challenges could be met for all Earth's kingdoms? in all areas of human activity and subtlety of form. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for a wonderful, wonderful session. Thank you also to Jillian for thinking so deeply of the animal kingdom in our earlier session. Indeed, big credit to all who contributed to this group process. And this is the second year we work in this rhythm, focusing on the common good. And we learn with each cycle, with each month. And it's, it's our work of holding meditative focus to our own meditative rhythm in our daily practice on the agreed topic and can come together and share and bring the focus through this work as we what we did today so i encourage you to continue this work and if, you, if it's the first time you're joining uh, or maybe not the first but uh you didn't participate more actively yet please be part of this work. It's our learning process and our creative process. This is our meditative creativity. And um, we continue our work. So we 
now in the face of the new moon moving towards the full moon so please let's continue holding this topic and share any impressions via impression board any further impressions and at the same time let's open our group attention turn our group attention towards the coming cycle as we start preparing for the cycle of Sagittarius and uh, which is part of the mutable cross and in the mutable cross we hold the focus on the theme of right relations and harmony bringing the measure of peace to the world normally at the end of this new moon meetings we have a, a brief session where we generate our ideas for the coming month I suggest we just hold the space of silence, looking forward to that. And if any ideas come, let's share them by email and verbally at the coming meeting of the uh, subjective group, our guardians of the purpose group, where we come together approximately in a week time to uh, share and decide on the focus topic for the next cycle. So let us hold the minutes of silence and look into the energy of the mutable cross and energy of Sagittarius, asking for ideas and impressions for us as a group. Over to you, Rebecca, to close our session today. So let us sound the soul mantra, which brings together so much of what has been touched today. I am the soul and also love I am. Above all else, I am will and fixed design. My will is now to lift the lower self into the light divine. That light I am. Therefore, I must descend to where the lower self awaits my coming. that which desires to lift and that which cries aloud for lifting are now at one. Such is my will.
Oh. 